Merseyside resort of Southport. Not quite Hawaii or the Côte d'Azur, but like those exotic paradises, the town plays host to one of the world's fastest-growing new sports. And over 400 triathletes here for the Heineken International Race. Britain's top men and women are here in force, like Tracy Harris, one of the colourful characters of the sport. And there's Glenn Cook, one if not the best of British triathletes who can expect to take on the star of this occasion in Britain for the first time. He is Mark Allen, undoubtedly the best in the world at the moment, but still concerned about his challengers. It's going to be, it's world class. You know, we've had, there, each country has a couple of guys who are, you know, on par with everybody else in the world. Glenn Cook, right next to me here, he's one of the best. And when he has a good day, he's really tough to beat. So if he has a good day, he could be the winner here. He'll be the guy I'm keeping my eye on. Cycling is the second segment of all the triathlons and where they can be won or lost. So bikes like these, costing £2,000, are almost commonplace. People like Sarah Springman, a top triathlete and also a top cyclist, she knows about bikes too. Just the brake cable came out of the little toggle in the, in the brake hood and it meant that when you applied the brake, nothing actually happened, which is a bit dangerous. So obviously, you know, one wants to fix it. We won't let you race unless the equipment's fully up to scratch. So, minor problem. All sorted out now, I think. Huh. You know, this bike, this rack was fine until I put my bike on it. Oh, well. And this is Julie Moss, the American top triathlete, here to try and win the women's section. Hi, everybody. Russ here, and this is episode nine of the Streak podcast. That audio you just heard was Phil Liggett introducing the Heineken Southport Triathlon that took place on the 18th of June, 1989. The highlights of the race were shown the following week on BBC Grandstand. It was the first British triathlon shown on TV and 220 magazine called the race, quote, a truly historic day in British triathlon, end quote. Although I'd read plenty of triathlon magazines, watching the Southport race was the first time I'd actually seen top athletes in motion. I also managed to record it using the family Betamax and made sure to push out the tab on the underside of the cassette so nobody could record over it. Most weekends after that, would involve getting home from my Saturday job at Thompson's Garage, watching the tape and then heading out on my bike to recreate the race in Burnham Beaches or Windsor Great Park. Already the year before, in 1988, the Southport race was a big deal. In their August 1988 race report, Triathlete magazine said the event, quote, put triathlon on a plane not previously attained in the UK, end quote. High praise considering the 1986 European Short Course Championships had been held in Milton Keynes and a round of the 1987 Le Coq Sportif European Cup had taken place in Canterbury. The 1988 event was sponsored by Warburton's Bakery and was called the Warburton's Big Bread Triathlon. A member of the Warburton family, Jonathan, was a triathlete, which almost certainly helped drive the sponsorship decision. £6,000 of total prize money was on offer, the largest ever UK purse at the time. I've included a poster advertising the event in the show notes. The race was promoted by the team behind Winning and Triathlete magazines. Winning was a colourful publication focusing on the European pro cycling scene and Triathlete UK was a spin-off from the original California-based Triathlete magazine, which was now owned by Off Press, based in Brussels. Episode 5 of the Streak podcast is all about UK triathlon magazines in the 1980s and 1990s. I'll link to it in the show notes. The women's race in 1988 was won by Sarah Springman. This victory came just a week after she won her first European short course title in Venice, adding to her two individual gold medals at the Ironman distance and five individual silver medals won since the ETU Championships began in 1985. Springman was one of the first British triathletes, having taken part in the UK's first ever triathlon at Curtin's Farm near Reading on the 5th of June 1983 the first national long course championships at Kiel de Water later that summer, and then the second Nice International Triathlon at the end of the 1983 season. As well as having an elite triathlon career that extended into the mid-1990s, Springman also served as the president of British Triathlon and the vice president of the International Triathlon Union. 
As a young triathlete in the late 80s and early 90s, I was a big fan of Sarah because although she raced internationally, she could also be spotted regularly at UK races. The men's race in 1988 was won by Robin Brew, riding without the aid of aero bars. He explained why in the September issue of Triathlete, quote, I'm not too happy on them. I've tried them out, but I just don't feel comfortable. Maybe I'll work on that, end quote. Robin swam in the 1984 LA Olympics and then in 1985 won the made-for-TV British and International Superstars competitions. The international event took place in Cyprus and the field of 12 athletes also included Mark Allen. In his book Total Triathlete, Allen explains that although he finished fifth overall, he found many of the events pretty challenging, especially the polo. In his best event, the 800-metre run, he finished second to Robin Brew. By 1986, Brew was dabbling in triathlon and in 1987 had started to get some solid domestic and European results. These included winning the British Grand Prix final in Milton Keynes and finishing second in the final of the 1987 Le Coq Sportif European Cup that took place in Barcelona. In the August 1988 issue of the German language triathlete magazine, I found this mini race report written in the style of a telegram sent from triathlete UK editor Chip Rimmer to the offices of Triathlete Germany. I've included a scan of it in the show notes, but here's a translation. Quote, Big Bread Tri was a great show. Stop. Qualification race for Stein. That's the upcoming European Middle Distance Championships. Stop. Even bookmakers on site, stop. Cook and Springman favourites, stop. Coop injured, stop. But hello Robin Brew, stop. As expected, best swimmer, stop. Also crazy on the bike, stop. Behind Cook and Blondell in tandem, stop. Hard course, stop. 115 lead into transition, stop. Halfway on the run, now only 55 seconds, stop. But Brew does it. Stop. Blondell second. Stop. In the last 200 metres. Stop. Springman without competition. Stop. Take care. Stop. Regards. Chip Rimmer. End quote. But now let's get back to that 1989 race that was on grandstand. The August 1989 issue of 220 and the June 1989 issue of British Triathlon Scene both had in-depth race reports. These magazines had debuted earlier in the year and were only available from race venues or specialist triathlon shops. Although I was making occasional visits to Total Fitness in Swindon, I also lived just down the road from Dave Russell's Cycles. Dave was building bikes for lots of triathletes back then and his shop also stocked triathlon exotica such as aero bars, lace locks, tri suits and magazines. Although the front of the Southport race looked amazing to me on television and there were strong British performances from Carlsberg Grand Prix regulars, the event had its problems. Both magazines didn't hesitate to point out the good points and the bad points. 220 praised the national TV coverage, the hype created around the participation of Mark Allen, the decent prize purse, the large number of spectators helped by the San Diego-style weather and the free beer. But 220 was also worried that, quote, if the TV coverage of the Heineken event shows the bunches and any senior police officer is watching, we can kiss goodbye to the sport ever being allowed to grow, end quote. British triathlon scene ran their full back page as a picture of a draft pack, they also suggested that the drafting packs were as big as 50 riders and this severely impacted the races of some of the top British women. I've linked to the BBC Grandstand coverage in the show notes and although I've seen the race plenty of times, I really think you should get on your turbo trainer and spin along as Mandy Dean leads from gun to tape and Mark Allen dominates from early in the bike. Here's a short race recap. Expecting good start here by Mark Allen in second place, but it was Glenn Cook who takes the early lead. They make the first S here in the lake, and already the strong men of the sport are stretching out the rest of the field. 
We're on the beach now, and Glenn Cook is the first one out, followed by Mark Allen. Well, only just, in fact, Allen in third place as they leave the water. So Mandy Dean swims ashore in front in the women's event. As Glenn Cook makes his way now up to the transition area. Mark Allen is number one, running up behind him there. So Allen is away first, almost as expected. Glenn Cook follows him, while Mandy Dean comes into the transition a little way clear in the women's race. There's Glenn Cook settling in nicely, a pro for three years, six foot high, 26 years of age, and chasing now Mark Allen. There's the leader of the women, Mandy Dean. Mandy Dean, in fact, coming first out of the water in the Nice Triathlon, but she lost it on the bike section. But this being a short course, that's 1.5 kilometers for the swim, 40 for the bike and 10 for the run, she may feel she has a better chance. And now it's going to be a long dry ride for Mark Allen in temperatures here approaching 80 degrees. Perhaps this is the way it should be done. Glenn Cook still running in second place here. Further out in the country, Mandy Dean here in green, still riding very, very well indeed and building a lead over Sarah Springman, who has in fact now been passed by Julie Moss. Always a concern in the bicycle section, drafting, or as we call it, slipstreaming, because riders must not ride in the slipstream of others, and indeed, the world of triathlons has often been the subject of controversy because of it. This is Mark Allen here, heading up the promenade at Southport, towards the transitional area and the end of the bike ride. And so, with the American already getting changed in the transitional area, Glenn Cook comes through in second place. Change of shoes is all that Allen requires, and out to face the final 10 kilometres. And this is Northampton's John Ashby here coming in, 21 years of age, and he really is one of Britain's up-and-coming future stars, I think. He's moved up into third place, and Cook here arrives. Alan already gone. There's Alan's bike resting on the railings. Glenn Cook, as expected, giving Alan the challenge. So this is Mandy Dean still ahead, now facing the run, which is two laps of the lake. But Mark Allen now untroubled, enjoying his mid-morning jog along the promenade at Southport. Nobody now to challenge him as he runs in to a lead of over four minutes. The race goes on at the front here, Glenn Cook on the right of our picture, and he's being passed here by John Ashby. Well, Cook was once seen as the rising superstar in Britain. He's one of the few men, if not the only British triathlete, who's actually beaten Mark Allen and Scott Molina and Scott Tinley, the real superstars of this sport. Julie Moss still running, and she's in fact gaining now on Mandy Dean. The question is, will it be quick enough? Third place, Sarah Springman. She also is trying to keep Julie Moss in her sights, but she has a good third place here. And back at the finishing line is Mark Allen. So the man who came here to win has done just that. He salutes the crowd for the very first time in Great Britain in a triathlon. John Ashby comes home in second place. And Mark Marabini here looks over his shoulder. He comes home in third, having passed uh, Cook. And just behind him, Rick Kittle there, number five. He's got fourth. And both of them having passed Cook in the running section. There's Glenn Cook. He'll be a bit disappointed with his fifth place today. He threatened Mark Allen until the run. Over two hours have passed by as Mandy Dean comes home, the best of the women. And then the chase behind, Julie Moss of the United States, Mark Allen's fiance. she comes home in second place. And Sarah Springman, she's finished third for the second time in as many days. And Sarah Springman's been one of the real pioneers of triathlons here. And she's won just about every honour on offer. She's also finished fifth in the Ironman in Hawaii. Tremendous athlete. Well, in Britain in 1983, there were 12 triathlons. This year, there will be 150 the sport is catching on the world over. But from sunny Southport for the moment, it's goodbye. This was the only time that Mark Allen raced in the UK. Southport was seven weeks before Allen's victory at the first ITU World Short Course Championships in Avignon and 16 weeks before his first win in Kona. Between coming to Europe for the Nice Triathlon on the 28th of May and racing Southport on the 18th of June, Allen flew back to the States to qualify for the US team for Avignon at the President's Triathlon in Dallas on the 11th of June. Mandy Dean was part of a group of South African triathletes that came to Europe to race in the late 80s. I've linked to an article about her on Athlete Natural in the show notes. This group of South Africans also included Simon Lessing, who at 18 years old finished 6th at Southport. 
Other fun parts from the video for me include Sarah Springman fixing her brake cable at 2.50, lots of sleeveless wetsuits near the front from 5.55 onwards, Glenn Cook's Quintana Roo with tiny wheels at 7.38, Mandy Dean riding from her rack like we used to do at 8.18, Mark Allen overtaking a tandem at 11.15, Patrick Barnes probably doing the best flying mount of the day at 12.12. 12. Phil Liggett calling the big four the top four at 13.08. Mark Allen's super smooth running style at 13.35. Julie Moss's sock racers at 15.50. And John Ashby finishing second at 20.30. I was still racing him in the mid-90s. The June 1989 issue of British Triathlon Scene also stated that, quote, Heineken were pleased with their investment and looked likely to sponsor again in 1990, but admitted improvements need to be made by both the organisers and themselves for the future, end quote. In fact, Heineken did continue their sponsorship for another year, and the race was moved to Portsmouth, with live BBC coverage this time. In 1991, tennis brand Donne took over from Heineken and the triathlete magazine Winning Organisation produced the last edition of the race, again with live BBC coverage. More on that in a future episode. Look, the 1989 Southport Triathlon on Grandstand wasn't the first glimpse of triathlon on British TV, but I'm pretty certain it was the first coverage of an actual race from gun to tape, albeit in highlights form. So what had been shown before? In 1984, a magazine programme on Channel 4 called Wheels, Wings and Water, hosted by Olympic swimmer David Wilkie, showed a triathlon in Milton Keynes. But I think it was an invitation-only event and put on just for TV purposes. Some of the leading British athletes at the time were involved, including Sarah Springman, Peter Moisey and Martin Dyer. I couldn't find anything about the Wheels, Wings and Water Triathlon online or in my archives. But here's a clip introducing the show. And thanks to Martin Lee, himself an excellent triathlete in the 1980s, for telling me about it. Next Wednesday on Channel 4, an energetic new series exploring all the sports using wheels, wings and water. Braving the elements to bring you all the excitement, Olympic gold medalist David Wilkie and journalist Sarah Temple-Smith. A new series full of action and adventure, Wheels, Wings and Water starts next Wednesday at 6.30. In 1983 and 1984, there was also TV coverage of the Foster's Quadrathlon. Here's a clip from a video I found on YouTube. It's an edit of the TV coverage and a home video made by Mick and Danny Mannion, who took part in the event. Of course, I'll link to the full video in the show notes. You really need to watch it. It was quite the adventure. You swim two miles between the piers at Brighton. Then you walk for 31 miles all the way from Brighton to Tunbridge Wells. Next, you cycle for 100 miles from Tunbridge to Brands Hatch and 49 times around the motor racing circuit. And finally, you run. With all those hours of effort already behind you, it's a full marathon, 26.2 miles, finishing here in Gravesend. And who knows, maybe some of the ABC Hawaii Ironman coverage was shown on British screens. The American broadcasters first filmed the race in 1980 and, of course, captured the famous crawl-off in February 1982. Here's a clip from 1981. It's not the ABC coverage, but by a local TV station. Anyway, it's brilliant. It's approaching 7am 
And we're standing on the pier in Kailua Kona on the Big Island, awaiting the start of the International Nautilus Triathlon. Hello, everybody. This is Paul Guanzan, along with Rick Kwan and Max Telford, the Ultra Marathon Man. Today, we'll be covering what has become known as the ultimate test in physical endurance. Three events combined into one, starting off with a 2.4-mile rough water swim that will take us out to Kailua Bay and back, and then immediately into a 112-mile bike race up the Kona Coast to Javi and back to the Kona Surf Hotel and then immediately into a 26.2-mile running marathon. And as grueling as this may sound, strangely enough, it has grown by leaps and bounds since its inception in 1978, Rick. That's right, Paul. When the triathlon was started three years ago, the event drew only 12 contestants. But this year, after receiving national exposure in Sports Illustrated and on ABC's Wide World of Sports, the field has grown to almost 400 entries from all over the world. Because of that large number, the event was moved from Oahu to the Big Island this year. And that isn't the only new change this year, is it, Max? That's right, Rick. There's a few changes, all right, but the most important change, I feel, is no support teams are allowed in this race. In other words, if you have a bike, a uh, puncture in your bike, when you're away in the middle of nowhere, you have to get off and fix it. A uh, big, big difference from last year, when we had uh, the winner last year had a very, very extravagant support team with him. So this year will be very interesting indeed. Show notes for this podcast episode are at thestreetpodcast.com forward slash podcast forward slash nine. As always, if you've got a question, a correction, some extra historical information, or just want to say hi, you can email me at thestreetpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks also to Sarah Springman and Robin Brew for fact-checking my script. I'll leave you with Bob Wilson's wacky explanation of what a triathlon is during the grandstand broadcast, then the prize presentation from Southport. I think I'll leave it to Phil Liggett to explain the real difficulties of a triathlon, but try actually yourself going in a marathon and uh, being prepared for a marathon, and, uh, and then suddenly having to actually compete in three marathon-type events in one day. As I said to you, let me... Uh, have Phil Liggett explain it further to you. And so, for Mark Allen, five times world champion, he's now a winner here in Southport for the he's first time. Stars on these occasions. <laughs> and his time was one hour, 51 minutes, 33 seconds. The main aim, undoubtedly this year, victory in the Ironman in Hawaii, where triathlons all began. And congratulations for Mandy Dean, the swimmer who came good out of the water, rode well on the bike, and consolidated in the run, but winning by less than a minute from Julie Moss.